All right, my country, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I call it to your time, Zoom. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have come back to MC Potoski Talk Show here yeah, on YouTube, where you get the latest news and entertainment around the world. If it's your first time on this great platform where we react to all videos that comes our way, please consider to subscribe and Put on your thumb bell, and if you love what we do on this great platform, why don't you give us a thumbs up and also share this video? I appreciate all my subscribers. We got all my people. Bless you guys. And if you have anything to say about this video, you can also drop your comment at the comment section, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, without wasting more time, guys, let's dive into this video. In 2009, you were kidnapped in southeast Nigeria, and, and your abduction or your abductors demanded a 15 million naira ransom, and you were released um, subsequently after your family paid a ransom. Um, tell us about that experience. Well, <clears throat> it's an experience I wouldn't like to experience again. <laughs> I would like to let it go. But that was a very bitter experience. Honestly, I wasn't thinking that somebody who made people happy and not could be kidnapped that way. But it was in the course of business anyway. I was invited to go to Prakot to perform for some church. And uh, on my way there, you know how these people do the bad well bandits whatever you call them they kidnapped me and they put me in the boot of my car and they took me somewhere i didn't know uh in the night i was just moving around but one thing i found out when i was in that captivity was that uh, it wasn't because of me it was because of the situation in the country a lot of things a lot of young men who young men who didn't have work to do were putting hearts into this. As a matter of fact, when they kidnapped me, it's like they showed surprise. I don't know whether it was real or uh, it was fake. They showed surprise. Oh, was it you? I said, yes, it was me. I said, come and sit down here. I sat down here. My luck was that most of the people who kidnapped, or rather the people who kidnapped me were my fans. So we were just discussing, provided I don't look at them or I didn't look at them then. That was the instruction they gave to me. And I wasn't looking at them. And uh, we were discussing. It was a very bitter experience. My, my legs were chained so that I don't escape in the night. And they kept telling me, look, please, we're not doing this because it is you. You know, because of certain things, they gave me a lot of stories of politicians they have worked with that didn't pay them and all that and all that and all that so they were just using me to see if they could make some money and uh, even though it was a very bad something i tried within that thing to talk to some people in the corridors of power to see whether in my own little way some influence could be brought to bear on the youth of this society how to improve on their living standard and uh, how we can cop some of these things. It was a, a bitter experience, but the thing, well, it's an experience all the same. And I don't think I'm going to go for a second tenure. Well, uh, we, we don't want you to go for a second for a second crack at it. But in terms of the really dark things that have happened to you, Nkem, your elder brother, Bartholomew, was one of three young Nigerians executed by General Buhari in the 1980s after Mr. Buhari took over in a military coup in Nigeria. I can't even begin to imagine what a traumatic experience that must have been for you. Buhari is, of course, Nigeria's current president. Your brother, along with two others, were executed by firing squad for a crime which was not punishable by death. Um, they had dealt in drugs, apparently. What influence has that experience had on your life? Well, if I could understand your, your question very well. It was about my brother that was killed uh, during the 
the military era. But Lomi Owo, he was a brother and a friend because we were close. Yes, as a human being, when somebody who's close to you was killed in that kind of circumstance. In fact, I was working with the, uh, the Anambra television that time, and I was so furious that I was shedding tears along the corridors because I didn't see. The only thing that touched me, in fact, the thing that touched me most was the fact that they had to shift the date of um, effective date of that decree. You know, during the military era, we can want to, if they want to stop something, they can just get out one decree, and then uh, the next minute the thing is in operation. So for them to backdate it, to involve or include people who did not commit the offense within their own regime, years back, I was very, very bitter, and I thought it was a personal thing to me, why would it be shifted back to include people who didn't commit the offense before the decree was, uh, was uh, uh, promulgated or whatever it is? So that was, I was very bitter about it, honestly. And I said a lot of things, even outside. It was a traumatic experience for me, just like you said, and uh, to people, my own people and people around me. But we have taken it as a movement, development, evolution of a country or a society or a culture. I just took it like that. I started to forget it. I never really thought about it or talked anything about it. We just have to go and uh, sit inside and think about it in your room with your own people. And that's all. I didn't want to make it an issue because I have uh, come to a place where or a position where I could make some noise and people will hear me. Well, I mean, we're, I we're certainly not going to make it happened. an issue here. And, and we appreciate very much indeed your sharing something so personal with us. And please stay with us. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty Thank you for watching that video. We appreciate and this is where I'll be leaving you guys. But if this is your first time on this great channel, please do it to subscribe and put on your notification bell so that whenever we upload any video for this great channel, you will be the first person to see the video. So guys, see you guys some other time.